Welcome to another episode of Not Quite Strangers. My name is Valerie Hope. I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, and I'm also a podcaster. I'm hosting this show where I have the opportunity to bring two people who do not know each other or hardly know each other and have a meaningful conversation. And my hope, and this is really my mission, where I get an opportunity to support and encourage you all to be more curious, to inspire your curiosity, to help build connection with others, and really disrupt the way we interact with people we don't know well. And this is an opportunity to do just that. So I brought these two fantastic individuals to you today. And like many others, have not met one another. Well, we did maybe like a few minutes right before we got we went live. But more than anything, I, I want to start off by introducing Gail Blair. Gail and I go back, Gail, what would you say, like six years, maybe? Six or seven years. Six or yeah. seven years. Yeah. And the way we met, we actually go to the same church or went to the same church. And we met, I don't know if you remember this, Gail, but we met at a New Year's party that was hosted by one of the church members. You and I sat next to each other and we we're just making some small talk. And you mm -hmm. shared with me that you'd gotten this like vision, this download of intuition that had you start your business as an intuitive food, uh, as intuitive chef. And I was like, what is that? Mm -hmm. And since ever since then, I've really reached out to you for two main things. I, I found myself reaching out to you when it comes to uh, how to use my spiritual intuition to support my well-being and to play tennis. So those are the two. <laughs> <laughs> those, have, those have been the two main things. Um, and you live here in, in Dallas, Texas, and Allen. And now I want to introduce my, my other friend here, Louis. Louis, you and I go back maybe like 10 or 11 years. And the first time I met you was at the Holistic Wellness Expo that's also hosted here in Dallas, Texas. And you have absolutely revolutionized my nutrition and how I, how my body works. I've learned so much from you because primarily you have confirmed for me why I didn't like eating eggs when I was a kid, dad, <laughs> because I am sensitive to those. And, um, and also the sensitivities, you know, that you found in some of the nutrition testing that you did. Uh, and then beyond that, we've become great friends over the years and you have been a really great source of laughter and adventure <laughs> and mm -hmm. education in my life. So thank the two of you for saying yes, for keeping me alive, basically. You have kept me living <laughs> and entertained. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> I like to start off by asking my guests, why did you say yes? I know we're all friends and stuff, but why did you say yes to me on a podcast with a complete stranger? Who do you want to answer first? Whoever was, has an answer, go for it. You've already made the first I already thing. made the first you move, yes. <laughs> well, you know, I would say yes to you about anything probably because I trust you, you know. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I would say yes. Okay. Because you ask. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Thank you. I said yes because I felt a lot of pressure from you. I felt awkward saying no. So I'm here not because I want to be. I'm Under just duress. Duress. A lot of pressure. No. Yeah. Very similar to Gail. I just thought, hey, sure, if you want, if you need help or anything, I'll, I'll jump in and participate. Uh, I love, uh, I like, what, one of the things that this COVID thing has done is it's made my ability to just go out and speak to people and say, hi, I exist. Uh, not as many people are wanting me to go, hey, come to our corporate headquarters and do a talk. So mm. it's just another way in the last couple of years, I've realized, hey, you know, uh, YouTube or podcasts is a way to reach people. So it's just another way to connect. If you can't connect in some of the more usual ways, it's a way to say, hey, you know, let's, let's meet new people and participate and be involved in life. You know, it's so funny you say this because I would say probably 70% of my life, <laughs> it's in this little box. I spend so much time talking to people, even my family members who live in other states. I, you know, my coaching clients who are in sometimes other states or countries, other time zones, right? So 
um, socially, professionally, like learning, a lot of my learning takes place in this platform too. So yeah, this has definitely been a time. This has definitely been a time where making connections in a more non-traditional virtual way has been normalized. Um, yeah. So, so this is normal. This is normal. Um, so that was my first question is why you said yes. My second question is now I'm both, I mentioned that the two of you have kept me alive and healthy for the last, at least what, 10, 11 ish years. And I'm curious about what is it about taking care of people that inspired you all to do the work that you do? Go ahead, doc. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I did. I was lost in college and didn't know what I wanted to do, and um, until I got the idea that I might in be involved in healthcare, because the idea of just helping people kind of seemed to light me up. And um, although healthcare classes are typically kind of thought of as hard, I, I was so enthusiastic about the idea of just helping people that my grades shot up <laughs> because I was interested. So. Um, I think I just really get a kick out of encouraging people. And um, I'm really blessed to have a job that uh, I like. And that, you know, of course, having some money is one of the basics of the job. But the other thing is it's a real blessing if you can do something you like. And I just, I love helping people and seeing people get better. And uh, I couldn't think of a more rewarding job than that. So, um, I kind of forgot what the question was and I'm rambling, but no, that, that was it. Yeah. That what attracted you to helping people and why you chose to do it in your job. So Lewis, you might want to share what, what exactly do you do in case people I, are wondering what kind of medicine or what kind of healthcare do you do? What is that? How would you describe I it? Don't know. <laughs> uh, no, um, I'm a chiropractor by degree, but more of what I do is nutritional work with people. And I uh, just, help people find out. I try to be a troubleshooter for what's behind health problems. So I, I try to find out if there's uh, any food allergies that are contributing to uh, inflammation. Uh, is there an infection that someone has missed? Uh, oh, let's identify it. Is there any toxins that have built up over time that we need to detox? Are there any organs that are hungry for some nutritional support? That if you give that nutritional support, that the organ starts to work better. So I'm just all about the kind of natural medicine and uh, diet and uh, trying to stay as prescription drug free as possible and enjoy life. And, uh, but I would also say one caveat is half of what I do is not nutrition. Half of what I do is calming people down. What do you mean? Um, could people come in thinking they have cancer and it's actually air allergies or they've like gotten on Google and Google, they go to the most interesting sounding thing on Google, which is the scariest thing. And then they've diagnosed themselves into a panic. And so I have to say, no, it's probably not that. Let's all take a breath and calm down and let's find something that will get you feeling better. And people, people want to have their kind of handheld a little bit and take a breath and calm down. So I think that's a big part of care is uh, not just being clinically good, but you have to, you have to kind of help the people's emotional state change. You have to listen mm -hmm. to them, and get them out of panic and get them laughing a little bit and, and, and then also do good work. Mm, that's so interesting. You say diagnose themselves into panic, <laughs> diagnose yes. ourselves into fear, which is actually yeah. the complete opposite of what Gail, of what you do. So can you share a little bit about what drives you to care for people in the way that you do? And tell us what you do in case people need a little bit of clarity. I would say that this drive to help people um, physically, you know, their health, actually all of it, mental health, physical health is, was from my mother. You know, she died at 57 years old probably one of the most unhappy people I've ever known and uh, you know died unhappy ever you know died after a fourth heart attack you know so that was very early so I made a connection really early on that uh, you know the doctor the cardiologist that tried to save her life said what really killed her um, we thought it was this this thing called Prince Metals pectoris angina which 
come to find out is not that uncommon now, but they didn't know that back then. And, and it didn't, they didn't really have a, they didn't know why the arteries were just constricting, healthy arteries constricting. And then they would cause, you know, this angina thing. Well, over the years, her arteries became clogged. And so then you have that little constriction going on. You have the clogged artery and, you know, you got a perfect storm. And so basically the cardiologist told me after she died that it was her diet that actually led to this, that this, this thing that she had is pretty benign unless you have clogged arteries, you know. Mm. And, uh, um, and that, that just really hit me. And he said it was her pack of cigarettes a day, her gallon of whole milk every other day, her coffee habit. She didn't eat. She just drank coffee and milk and oh. oat. <laughs> and uh, basically that was, uh, she didn't eat much. And that was, that, he said, that's what it was. And that's, that's the connection that I made. And so that was early, you know, mm. um, in my adult life. And um, it changed everything. And so everything started going in that direction. And then in 2000 and end of 2011, I had a big um, awakening and you know, these gifts walked in and, and I, I think it was right, well, pretty shortly after or before I met you actually. Mm -hmm. And um, actually I've been, I, I think we're going on year 12 now, but uh, and it started with food and hearing this conversation between food and the body, literally, I'm hearing it. And uh, the body is, this conversation is telling me what's going on with the body, where it's going on. And it just has exploded from there. So it was just uh, a physical thing working with the food. And, um, you know, then it, I realized everything's energetic, you know. And it's like, wow, so they're the root of disease, which is the goal, it's, it's, I'm sure it's your goal too, uh, Lewis, is to get to the very root of disease so you can get resolution. So that's what I, what I do. And some of it's physical and some of it's energetic, which is what I call anything you can't see. The reality is it's all energetic. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just going to ask, first of all, reactions to what each of you have said so far. What What's resonating for you? Maybe if you have a question about something that you heard. Well, me and millions of others are curious about the awakening that you mentioned, Gail. Uh, <laughs> I, I, am totally, I am totally with you on the get down to the root, because if you just hand out stuff for symptom control, um, it's not that great. But if you can get down to what's the cause of it and work on the cause and everything clears up. So I'm, I, I shoot for that, that ideal of getting to the root, but I, right. I, I might, I really perked up when you said you had an awakening and I was just curious, uh, was that something you were after? Was it spontaneous? Uh, how did that happen? And, and what was your kind of first experience of that? It was a complete surprise and shock. Um, um, it, uh, you know, I think people, when I say awakening, it was hyper awareness. It's a hyper, just hyper awareness. It's this, you know, this, I can't really even describe it. It's a, it's a, it's like, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you thought you knew who you were and you realize that you're so much more than that. You know, you're actually spirit. And, you know, it's just this moment of just knowing everything all at once. And, um, and it came on the heels of a pretty, I don't know if I've ever sh shared this with you, Valerie, but I was suicidal. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's a hard, it's the hard rock bottom places that people actually start mm. waking, up, waking up from. And um, I had started studying the Course in Miracles. And in, in about halfway in that course, I was reading, um, You're Awake. And all of a sudden, it's like flipping a switch, literally. And um, I had a, like about a four-day period of where I could see the energy field of everything. I couldn't shut it off. It was amazing. You know, um, I was laying in the, in, in the park one day looking at the grass. And it's like a gold filigree. It's all connected, every blade. And um, after about four days of literally overwhelm, everything started to settle down. 
now I, I just see energy fields. Everything's got an energy field, even a rock. I see energy fields now, but only when I want to, <laughs> instead of just right in my face. So, you know, that's where it all started. Wow. No, and you had that was that was early 2012. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. That's so cool to hear uh, what happened to you. I can picture it. That's such a uh, uh, awesome and startling thing that probably happened. It was and startling. Like I said, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, all I know is this book fell in my lap and something told me I really needed to pay attention to it, even though it didn't make any sense. Um, and it, I didn't understand any of it. I'm like, okay, but I, but something told me I really needed to keep with it, stay, stick with it. Hmm. It didn't take long after that. You know? <laughs> yeah, it seems, it seems kind of, uh, like, who do you go to? If you're like, I, I'm, I'm seeing energy fields around everything right now. And, uh, uh, aren't you too? Uh, <laughs> who, do I, who do I talk to and share this with? It's, it's not that common. Well, shortly, I'll have to tell you this. Within that four days, my mentor showed up. I actually had moved myself to Allen, Texas. Had no clue why I was moving this direction. I'd moved from Carrollton. And um, my, um, my mentor was here. And I got invited to a, a course. It's called A Course in Awareness. And the friend that invited me, I hadn't even known her that long. I was actually working for a, a wellness doctor, chiropractor. And she was one of the um, uh, clients. And she said, I don't know why I'm inviting this to, you to this. I don't know, you know, if this is up your alley or what, but I, I just get, I should invite you. And I walked in that front door of Alita's house and I just literally almost fell on my knees. Um, and I was crying. I knew I had just walked into the, the woman's house that was going to be able to help me hone this and yeah. rein it in, you know, because I was in that overwhelm moment. I'm almost getting teary eyed just telling you about it because it was like, what am I going to do? I can't sustain this. I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. That's phenomenal. And I didn't know the pain that you were experiencing before you had your awakening, Gail. I wasn't. I don't think we talked about that. We talked about yeah. a lot of things but that didn't come up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious and Louis, just so you know, there's a little bit of glitchiness on your video. So for those of you who are watching and wondering why he looks so intense, it's because the video is frozen. Yeah. <laughs> it freezes here and there. So um, you are very animated, Louis. So I think we get from your voice your animation <laughs> okay, yeah i like to freeze and then lip and lip uh talk with my lips not moving <laughs> well you're doing uh, that great you're knocking it out of the park <laughs> thanks ventriloquism is my specialty <laughs> um, um and louis you've been in you know you've been doing what you do for a while right how long 23 years 23 years what keeps you going cocaine <laughs> uh no i'm uh, just kidding um no well, offense to all those cocaine users out there no no i mean whatever rocks your boat um what it's not hard to keep going um i uh, i'm a little bit confused by the question almost i understand the question but the um i love my job if i if i won the lottery i would I would still want to do this job. I might take a little bit more vacations to, uh, might fly first class instead of uh, back in the cheap seats, but I would still want to help people because I feel like that's a talent I have and it, it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. So that has kept me going because it's fun. Um, and uh, I, I have this drive to just become a little bit better every year and uh, you know, become proud of myself and uh, like, hey, I've gotten good at my area. And I love seeing people laugh and have a and get healthy. And uh, so I don't think that anything could stop me from doing this. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Fair enough. No, I, and I can tell, and I'm glad because then I wouldn't have other, you know, you to keep me alive, which is great. <laughs> I remember um, beyond the, the expo that I, where I met you and you did some allergy testing and food sensitivity testing with me, you, you both, the two of you both use kinesiology, right? Muscle testing to identify what might be getting in the way of someone's optimal health. Um, yeah. And I know, I don't know what it is. I think there are a couple of resources that I remember kind of like where I had a bit of an awakening when it came to my wellness. And one of them was the Celestine Prophecy. And it was introduced right. to me in the most random way by a front desk agent <laughs> where I was checking into a hotel at the time when I worked for Hyatt. And I don't, how we got into the conversation, I have no clue, but he mentioned this book. And somehow in that conversation, I knew that book was important. And that one was where, you know, you, you, Gail, you described seeing the energy around everything. I remember there was a portion of the book where it talked about how everything is also, you know, there's an energy field emanating from everything. And I think for the first time I knew it was something intuitive, but I hadn't actually seen it in written form. So that was a piece of the puzzle that was important. And then the other book, Lewis, you and your mother actually mentioned to me um, called Conversations with God. And yeah. that book, I, I bought that, that book years ago. I had it in my collection. Yes, mm. I must admit that there are books on the shelf that I have not read. Um, <laughs> but there are a bunch of books. That, and in that case, I bought the book and I had it for seemingly years. And it wasn't until I heard you and your mother, Lewis, talking about the book that I was like, I have that book. I should read it. And then you also, Lewis, described how you came about the book. I think you said you it fell at your feet or something. Can, you no, no. Uh, but I felt like it was one of those... Uh, I was guided to that book. We, I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, just on a vacation, and we wandered into a bookstore, and I was totally bored, and I just started kind of walking around the aisles of this bookstore, and I just felt like, almost like somebody just grabbed my shoulders and kind of took me to this aisle and said, look up. No, more up. No, look to the right. See that book? You should pull it down, and so I just kind of, okay, I'll pull this down. Quit pushing me. And I, I pulled it off of the shelf and just started thumbing through it. And it was so uh, engaging. I thought, oh, I better buy this book. And then it was, it was quite um, an enlightening book, uh, peppered with humor. Mm -hmm. And um, it seemed to kind of just resonate with me. And I just like, oh, wow, cool. And then my mom said, what are you reading? Why are you laughing? <laughs> and it's one of the few books that I laugh out loud while I'm reading it. So uh, I introduced it to her. That's so cool. <laughs> and then you, yeah. I think in the conversation about the book, I don't even remember why the two of you were talking about it, but I was like, I have that book. I've never read it. I want to laugh too. <laughs> so yeah. I started reading it. Gil, what would you say about that? I love that book. Oh my, and that was one of the first books that came actually. We're, we're like, we're getting all the same stuff. That's the fun part, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, I'm always amazed at how much help we have and, yeah. and, and, you know, getting us to wake up, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, the Celestine prophecies was the same way. I think I was telling you that when I started reading that, what would happen, and this still happens to this day, I have these, my go-to books because I know they're going to guide me. Right. So if I, you know, I, I'm asking for resolution or explanation or, more clarity on something I can go to um a course of love for instance or a course in miracles and I can go okay show me mm -hmm. and then I just go down you know and say where is it and by the way I don't you I don't use applied kinesiology anymore except for to verify so mm. I get it I get it in my yeah I get it in my head and then after a while I'll stop and use my pendulum have I got all that right yes right um, but anyway, I'll just go down and say, where is it? And it's amazing. But the Celestine prophecies, what it was doing, it was walking me into that is what it was doing is, um, I would have an experience during the day and then I'd open the book at night, which I couldn't wait to get back to these, to this book. And, uh, I would read about the experience that I had during the day and I would go, wow, you know, that's great. I mean, it's just a miracle, right? That is so, really cool. 
you start opening the doors to these things and then you step through and then you can't put the uh you can't put it back in the box mm -hmm. it just keeps going from there no it's pretty awesome <laughs> yeah I, Lewis, I think you're trying to show us something, but since you're frozen, it's hard. Oh, is that your pendulum? Yeah. Oh. Look at that. Is that some sort of shark's tooth or something? Got mine here. <laughs> no, that's my that's my pendulum. That's a crystal yeah. there. Sometimes I okay. play around with uh with it too. I'm not as good as Gail, but I'm learning. It's I think it's a cool way to just get feedback yeah it's a cool way to mine. tap it, but you know the way i get it is this is the way to uh tap into this inner spirit energy you know because we're, we're literally connected to the source of all knowledge mm -hmm. and um if quantum physics is uh what quantum physics proves is true which i do believe it is is that everything's happening at once that means that you know for every question and answer, the question and the answer are already there you know and so you're just tapping into that and until you can hear it here you can hear it through your body you can hear it, you can get it with a pendulum i use yeah. dowsing rods um, on only one thing that i do spirit guided me see use dowsing rods on this one thing and it's actually energetic skeletal adjustments <laughs> cool and, uh, uh, so that I can see the size of it, you know, because the dows and rods, they open and close. So I can, I can see the size of it, but um, I don't know where I was going with all of that, but no, yeah. This is perfect. You know, the, the, here's the thing I got to say, because I, I trust the two of you implicitly with so many things in my life, both physically, mentally, psychologically, spiritually, a lot of things. And I know, and my friends may not say this to my face, but I know I sound, I may come off a little bit cuckoo <laughs> when I start talking about some of the things that I do or how I view my well being and my, my approach to wellness, especially right now, right? We're living in a time where there's so much hyper uh, vigilance and hyper um, focus on health because of the pandemic that we've lived in in the last couple of years. And so, and I'm just the recipient of your of your skill set, but I can't imagine what what is the thing that people either most misunderstand about what you do or how you do it or are confronted by. <laughs> we got the mass, Lewis. <laughs> so, and look, I'm 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 really asking because I like I said I do trust the two of you with so much. I'm curious. What's most, what's been the most challenging about what you do and how you do it? Uh, I'll just jump in. Uh, I think the biggest challenge of my job is, uh, I think people get caught up a little bit in the testing method. Like I use applied kinesiology as my main testing way, Gail. And, mm -hmm. um, and people get caught up kind of in the novelty of that. And my, my point is like, uh, don't, it's a challenge for me to say, can you just not even pay attention to the testing method? What I want you to do is change your diet. Can you grasp that? <laughs> oh yeah, that seems normal. Or, you know, I think there's been a missed infection or your immune system's weak and we're gonna get rid of this infection by strengthening your immune system. And you're gonna clear out something that's giving you all these symptoms. Can you grasp that? And they're like, oh yeah. But people seem to be like, oh, you pushed on the arm. That's so weird. And uh, wow, it is so odd. But we're just trying to find a cause of your discomfort. And I think that using this testing method is really accurate. It's a little odd, but it's going to get down more towards the cause of why you're feeling bad. Or maybe it's an emotional thing. Or maybe it's a structural thing. But if we can get down to the cause of it and work on that, people feel better. And right. then I have to coach people. You can, but I would rather you not run out and say, you should go see this doctor. He's going to push on your arm. And he's <laughs> kind of weird because that doesn't usually go over well. And people are shy then to come see me because I sound like a psycho. But right. if people would just say, go see this guy, he really figured out what my problem was that sounds better. So that's kind of one of the challenges is like getting people to 
kind of understand what this is all about. And the testing method is just a very small piece of it. Uh, so that's kind of one of the things that I work with on a daily basis. Mm. Right. Mm. You, Gail? Okay, so my, so ask the question again. Yeah, what do people misunderstand or what's challenging about what you do or how you do it to either you or for others? Well, one of the things that's most challenging to me is, is uh, get, staying out of my head and not worrying about what people think, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I understood fairly early on, you know, Spirit said, you know, if you're getting this, it means it's for you to share with me. If mm -hmm. you're not getting it, 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 it means that, um, you know, whatever you basically whatever you're getting is trust it and share it. Because some of the stuff I'd get, I'd go, you want me to say what? You want me, you want me to say what? <laughs> you know, this person's going to think I'm Looney Tunes. Uh, but because, but I trust it. And I'm like, okay, okay. And it, it's never failed, you know. Hmm. So the hardest part was getting out of my own way and just letting it, you know, what I was getting, um, sharing it with them. And then... You know, I have a lot of mainstream, I call mainstream clients now, okay? These are people that are not into woo-woo, you know, is what people want to call it or whatever. Uh, but they're, everybody's referred. And so they're referred by people that have been really, really helped. And so they're willing, you know, to say, okay, I'm going to put aside what I know and let me just jump into something that's really outside of the box. Mm. So I don't really... You know, the people are pretty open when I, when I get to them, but, but it, you know, open to do, you know, doing something outside the box, but they can also at the same time be extremely resistant. You know, they're yeah. so, I work with a lot of doctors and I've got a lot of psychiatrists and mm. uh, therapists and people like that. And, and they can be so entrenched and trained in one modality that it's, it's hard to to, you know, for them to get their brain out of it, you know, because that's what you have to do is kind of have to get out of it, you know, just kind of let go of what you, well, that's what I have to do. I have to let go of what yeah. I know to know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta yeah. let go of what you know to know. know. That's really fantastic. Yeah, that's profound. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, oh, go ahead, Lewis. I was just going to add a little um, point that that was a really cool point you made, Gail, about kind of let go of something to learn something. Uh, I, what I struggle with when I'm testing people with a, applied kinesiology, not exactly struggle, but I have to, I have to kind of keep my awareness on not caring too much, because if I care too much, I might try to be anticipating what the answer is. Right. And answers come left or right or up or down, and, and they don't always make sense. Right. And if I if I'm not open or if I'm slightly prejudiced, uh, I may be influencing uh, my ability to hear it or skewing things up. So I try I try to remain neutral and open to hmm. what's going to show up. And then usually that's the right answer. Right. When when I'm in a kind of neutral, I care about the person, but I don't know what to expect the answer will be. And that's the best state I can be in a working state is kind of that curious, but no, no preconceptions as to what will show up particularly. You're, you're spot on. You know, I do a workshop called A Course in Discernment. And, you know, my, my goal now is for everybody to walk into their, their, their inborn guidance because we all have it. But like I said, you got to get your knowing out of the way. So in the workshop, I take people into that void where they don't know the answer. Um, and there's there's practices that you can do to hone that skill. It's easy for me because I work with people remotely all over, actually all over the world now. And uh, I don't know anything about them. Sometimes I can't even tell what sex they are. And so I'm in that void on a daily basis. But mm -hmm. most people don't have that kind of training. You know, it's hard to get out of your head. I, I, I laugh sometimes and joke and say, well, the reason I you know, walked into this because I didn't know much to begin with. <laughs> I don't have a lot of education, you know, so I didn't yeah. have a lot of stuff blocking me. But um, yeah, I mean, you can hone that skill. 
And, you know, one of the questions I teach people to ask is before you test, I don't care what the answer is. I only want to know the truth. <laughs> you know, yeah. you get in that curious mode and that's where you got to be. It's got to be a, a child's mind, literally. It's like the child is not judging anything. They just want to know, you know, because they really don't know. Right. Right. And that's where you got to be. So you're spot on. Yeah. So you're oh, probably yeah. really good at what you do because um, <laughs> I do see a lot of um uh, I worked with, uh, you know, a wellness chiropractic doctor. And when I started getting, um, when my answers on supplementation weren't lining up with this one's, then that, that ended up being some, a conflict. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's yeah. really interesting. I'm thinking about, um, uh, so Hay House is the publishing company that produce you know works by like Wayne Dyer and Louise you know Louise Hay was the founder and I remember my mother and I going to a Hay House conference in Tampa Florida back in like 2008 and Carolyn Sutherland I don't know if you're familiar with her but she's a medical intuitive she was one of the people who had a session and it was like on the stage and she had people walk up to the microphone and she would basically do an intuitive reading of their medical conditions or medical issues. And I'd never seen or heard anything, I think, like that. I've heard of people who have intuition, you know, able to see into the future or talk to spirit, but I hadn't actually heard it seen focus on medicine. And it was fascinating. And I was like, oh, I want to, I want that. <laughs> like I want to be able to not to do it, but to receive that level of of, of knowing, um, which is I think what's drawn me consistently. In, in working with you all, the two of you. Um, but I, I'd like to maybe change things up a little bit. I think it's time for a wild card. So I've asked the two <laughs> of you to come up with some questions that you would love to ask each other. So who has a wild card they'd like to use at this time? All right, Lewis, go. Gail, what is your favorite place in the world? Oh. What is my favorite place in the world? on the tennis court <laughs> that's the first thing that came to my mind it's uh it's one i, I get so much joy from uh, the tennis court cool I, in, in you know the camaraderie camaraderie and that's one thing that really didn't totally get go away with covid you know mm -hmm. there was just a really short brief period but i still find, found tennis courts <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so yeah all right Gail, you got a wild card for Lewis. Oh, okay. Uh, what was mine for you? Let's see. What, what was the risk you took that most changed your life? Oh, I have to think. There's, that, that's, um, you know, I think, probably going into this profession. I, um, my dad is a medical doctor. So mm -hmm. my dad said, hey, you've got to be a lawyer, uh, engineer, or a medical doctor, because then those jobs are very stable and you can provide for yourself. And um, I took a big risk kind of not following that, those big three choices. And so I, I, well, I'll be a chiropractor, which was, you know, different. And then right. I got in, in, interested in the applied kinesiology while I was in school and, and I took a risk in going to the class and you know being labeled as different and weird and woo woo and um, so that was a very big risk with being uh, the chance of like just being labeled as too different and uh, but it's made all the difference in the world and the payoff is huge I love my work I, I help a lot of people I work for myself. I don't feel like, like I'm part of the system or working right. for the man. And I can kind of control the, yeah. the, mood, the mood of my office. I can control it. And I have this wonderful tool. And so the, the reward was just gigantic. Yeah. Although the risk was there of like, uh, oh, I might be labeled as a black sheep. <laughs> like yeah. Now I'm like, great, I'm a black sheep. Yes, I love it. So I'm much more comfortable. People say, I went to my real doctor. I used to be so offended. <laughs> I'm a doctor. 
And then I went to my real doctor. Well, you know what I mean, medical doctor. And I'm like, now it just doesn't bother me. And they say, I call you my voodoo doctor. And I go, awesome. I love it. I love it. You're my, you know, you're my witch doctor. And I like, I love it. I know how to say it in Spanish. So now I like, I own it and I'm comfortable with being different. <laughs> So, so what does your what does your family think about it now? Well, my dad now comes by for checkups, and he's the Yay. medical doctor, yeah. and my mom, and um, it's just kind of like, yeah, well, of course, that's what you do. But you know, there was a break in period of like, you're insane, and uh, we pray for you and hope you come back to your senses. And right now, it's yeah. like, of course, he does this cool, crazy stuff, and he figures stuff out. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. And my family is very supportive. Mm. But in the beginning, it was like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. So <laughs> my, mine's the same way in the beginning. And now that now I'm their go to my 90 year old dad is asking me yesterday. Well, you know, your sister and her husband tested positive for COVID. Can you can you verify that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, you know, you should call and talk to her and, you know, uh, yeah. So I love that. You know, it's so interesting The the, the two questions you, you both ask each other, I find resonate with me because number one, you both know, I love tennis too. It's been a sport that's brought me a lot of joy to your point. Uh, Gail is the camaraderie is the, the play right and and the and the location the exercise the exercise oh yeah that's right that that is that's exercise, right exercise there's so much of it that i enjoyed i remember um a few years ago i had torn meniscus both knees Ooh. yeah on both knees and and it was achy and swollen and painful and i did go to a real doctor <laughs> an orthopedic surgeon Ouch. Um, and by the way i should have said at the beginning <laughs> any medical advice dispensed by the podcast is <laughs> valerie hope is not Thank liable <laughs> just wait us all oh, follow there's, your spirit I mean, oh my goodness doctors oh, have their place no follow their spirit yeah, but it was funny because i went to this orthopedic surgeon and did, you know did the whole mri the whole nine yards both torn meniscus um, what he told me though is really you have is degenerative. So even if we do the surgery, there's maybe, you know, there's a 30% chance that um, they will be successful. You will continue to degenerate in that area. And yay. I was like, yay, okay, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? So he did recommend that I lose weight so that would lessen the amount of pressure that I put on my knees. I'm like, all right, got it. But then I'm like, but I still want to play. Like I don't, and I don't want surgery. So what alternatives do I have? And because I've been exposed to so many of the things that we've already talked about, um, I did, I think I went to you first, Lewis, and I was like, okay, is there anything I can do? And you provided me with some, some great nutrition to make sure that the cartilage and the bones and everything was, was strong. And then I also, at our church at the time, we were doing um, the healing, uh, what was that called, Gail? The, the not healing circle. Shoot. Oh, I forget yeah. the name. Sacred healing circle. Yeah. Sacred, sacred, healing. Healing. yeah. Mm -hmm. sacred healing, which essentially is like energy medicine, right? A, like a Reiki session, so to speak, two different people meditating and then running their hands over the body. Well, I had one of those sessions and I shared, you know, I have torn meniscus in my knees. I'm not able to play tennis and I'd love to go back to play and I'd love to be, have the mobility. And I did an hour long session. There was a point in the session though, that I remember I, I was also in this meditative state, but I remember it felt like I had thousands of hands on my, my skin, nothing invasive, just like angel hands, <laughs> like I like to call them. And I started to cry because I just felt in that moment so much love and care. And it was like, we got you, we're good. And from that moment on, and obviously following the recommendations that two of you have given me throughout, this is, is probably been six years now or so. I'm, I play tennis weekly, twice a week sometimes, and mm -hmm. I've had no issues. I, when I do find there's any kind of swelling or any kind of irritation in my knee, I know it's nutrition based. And so now I know to look for certain signs because I've been taught by the two of you so well. But I share all this because I think we... I've learned to note that there's so much out there, right? The, the, that, the, that we know, 
And there's so much that we don't know. And I am now much more keen on exploring the stuff that I don't know and that I don't know. <laughs> and, and I love that the two of you are so committed to bringing that to light for other people because it makes a difference. So if nothing else, this was like a little plug for what Gail and Lewis bring. So if you're interested, um, and I'll make sure to put your contact information and stuff in the link. So anyways, that's what I wanted to share. Let's go for another wild card round. Other question? Unless you want to respond to anything I said. Well, I, I just wanted to say this. Um, a big aha that I got, and that was actually, you know, probably one of one of my questions is, uh, and uh, I've got, you know, I've got a book coming out and it's in, in, in the way it it's just basically a journey that took me along unknowingly, you know, and uh, and then when I got to the seventh aha, it's called the seven missing links to abundant and sustainable health. And uh, the the seventh aha is um, that we're not governed by the laws of Mother Nature. We're governed by the laws of the universe because we're mm. spirit. Right. So we're spirit in uh, the physical body is energy it, and, you know. And so that changed everything. And that's why you were able to have the experience that you had in that healing is because your body uh, responded to your spirit and, you know, your spirit guide, your helpers. And, uh, and basically that's what, where I was going with that is the body is an amazing conduit. You know, mm. it's a conduit for spirit telling us you know, not just what's going on physically, but it's also telling us, you know, what's going on, uh, what we're thinking. Our body is responding. It's not a creator. We're the creator and it's responding to our creations. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you learn how to, to get those messages and translate them and then make the corrections, whether it be, uh, you know, energy you can't see like your emotions, like your thinking, your emotions, a guide to your thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. So your body, your emotions are either telling you that you're, what you're thinking or doing is out of alignment with health and happiness. That's, mm -hmm. that's the basic message. Um, alignment is key. Yeah. The mind has to, you know, I don't care how, what you eat. If your mind is not in alignment with health, you're not going to have it. Mm. Oh, that brings me to Lewis, something that you and I did recently with Psych K. Would you like to share what that is? Because I think it kind of dovetails nicely into what Gail just shared. Um, Psych K is just a way of it's it's a way of muscle testing what you believe to be true. So mm. um, what does that have to do with anything? Well, your beliefs have a lot to do with everything. Uh, everything. If you believe something, <laughs> And it's a great chance that, that what you believe strongly will show up. So if, if you, for example, believe that money is difficult, probably will be. It's going to be. Um, so, um, you know, why am I having trouble with money? I want more money. But uh, the Psych K is basically a way of muscle testing people's beliefs. You can say a statement like uh, money is good. And if your muscle gets weak with that statement, that tells right. me that your unconscious mind is incongruent with that statement. It's right. like, I don't agree with that statement that money mm. is good. So let's keep it at a distance. Um, right. So you can check the unconscious beliefs, which are way more powerful than the conscious beliefs. All right. right. I want to lose weight, but in the back of your mind, something's whispering, but you don't deserve it or uh, it's scary to look sexy or right. whatever we've got going whatever around. Whatever it is but, mm -hmm. that you believe, it's running back there really, and it's really running us. Yeah, yeah it's, the, it's, the, it's the powerhouse. And, and the, the muscle testing these statements is a way of checking the unconscious, uh, you, you congruent with that or not. And, and it, you don't know what your unconscious bias is because it's unconscious. Because it's unconscious. So <laughs> by checking <laughs> You, you don't know what your bias is sometimes because yeah. it's uh you think i i would like to have more money of course i want more money of course you, you have a hundred <laughs> beliefs that are negative yeah, so it's right. a way to check the right you're either being a conscious creator or unconscious creator mm -hmm. <laughs> what you want to do is get all the opposing thoughts out of the that are in, that are running in the background uh into the foreground so they're not unconscious anymore 
Yeah, yeah, you did some of the similar work too. And yes, Lewis, very I think similar. we lost your connection. I'm not sure. We stopped hearing you right after you finished your last statement. Oh, but I think you're coming back. You just have to unmute now. Um, actually, we it's just so fun because we actually really do all the same things. We're yes. just doing slight, you know, maybe slightly different modalities, but we're doing literally the same work. That's yeah. yeah. Which we're is very, why we're overlapping a lot. Uh, yes. but the that site K to, to just close it is a way of checking your unconscious beliefs and then making some little shifts mm -hmm. that can allow kind of what you really want to be okay with the unconscious mind and let, let a shift happen. And then mm -hmm. if you have that shift, like say for money, I, d I tell people now when you walk out in your car, I don't expect that someone's left a briefcase full of gold in your car <laughs> after our site K session but you are more open to learning about money or taking smart actions or being okay with it and for it showing up now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what changes have you guys made um, in your, you know, knowing that you're seeking alignment and teaching people to align, where is something and what is something in your life that you've had to come to alignment with or check your beliefs or change your beliefs on? I had to come into alignment with the money thing. Ah. Yeah. That was back in, remember, I think it all came full circle in 2017. Mm. Yeah. Um, the surrender experiment. Remember that? I remember. You should yeah. share it with, uh, Lewis might find this interesting too. Yes. Tell me about it. Um, I kept getting this synergy. Uh, and that's one of the ways, you know, I realized that life guides me in everybody is you keep seeing the same inform, you know, something pop up over and over again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I was walking right on the line of this place of really, you know, uh, totally believing that I'm one with everything. You know, it's funny in the course of love, it's it, is said that, if, and this is hilarious, and uh, there's a sense of humor here, you'll, you'll, buy into that you're a spiritual being and that you're one with everything before you will before you you will accept that you're one with money mm. <laughs> you know uh, if you're yeah. one with everything well you're one with money so I was probably I was not probably I was walking that line you know I was getting ready to just really dive off and you know and let go of everything and I kept getting the synergy and the synergy I kept getting this message give yourself away Give yourself away. Give yourself away. And then the last, um, uh, it was a Saturday night. I was going to church on Sunday. And a client had told me that I reminded them of a healer in Australia. And I went and looked him up. And, and what came up was he didn't charge for anything. He, uh, he, worked, he, he would accept love donations, but it wasn't a requirement. And, you know, I'm like, okay. I get what you're saying. I don't know exactly. I said, I tell you what, spirit, you give me one more sign and I'm all in <laughs> because it's pretty scary to think about, you know, not charging for your work. You know, you've been charging all this many years, you know, and, uh, and, and, and it's not cheap either. I mean, you know, I've been charging a good, good fee. And, uh, and so I went to church that morning and on the way, um, I just, I, I'm at sitting at 75 and Mockingbird and I just start tearing up and I'm like, why am I crying? What is going on here? And I had no idea what was caught, what, what that was about. I was just feeling really emotional and it was good emotional, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I got to church and I was the, um, uh, the word of the day reader. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the word of the day was all about it, it, this is all on my blog so you can read about it but it was all about give yourself you know get, give unconditionally basically <laughs> what it was and that you'll receive tenfold right and uh and, and i i couldn't read that without just i knew that that was the answer Fine. <laughs> that was it and i said okay okay <laughs> I didn't know exactly how it was going to work, but after I laid down to take a nap that day, I did. The Spirit told me all about it, you know? So you're going to take down all your pricing off the website and you're going to work on a love donation. And I'll tell you when the experiment's over. I'm like, okay. And, uh, um, and within a three-month period, I 
literally had amassed uh, $10,000 in my savings account. Not, not just, you know, just fun money, you know, okay. like, what are you going to do with that, Gail? And uh, because I had a savings, you know, before then it was hard for me to say money. I always had enough, but it was like, I yeah. never had a cushion, you know, uh, never had a big cushion. And, uh, and so I was, I was, that was, it was proven to me, this is the way it works. And so it ended at about a three month mark. And, uh, you know, everything just came to a screeching halt, business halt. I'm like, but I'd already learned. I'm like, okay, you're telling me something. What are you telling me? The spirit said, well, the experiment's over. I said, well, now what? Well, now you're just going to intuit what you charge people because you do that already. You ask for a pH, you see it. You, I see numbers. If I'm in a grocery, grocery store and I, how much is this in this cart? I see a number, <laughs> So you're just going to do it that way. Hmm. And so that's the way I've done it ever since. Ooh, pretty amazing. So I surrender. Yeah. I love that. Lewis, I want to, <laughs> your eyes My brain have been is melted. <laughs> your brain is melted. <laughs> My brain is melted. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, I'm free, you know, I, I'm free in my mind. That, that's the, that's what, you know, spirit was teaching me is that go of what you think and just be guided. And it will all work out and it, and it, and it has, and it continues to, it's amazing. Yeah. You're doing like the matrix stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your brain melting, Lewis? Oh, just, uh, just that it's so cool about how fully intuitive, like, oh, I do a little intuition about this. Gail is like, I do intuition about, well, I don't do intuition about this. The rest is intuition. Mm. So it's really cool to hear how just bam, just how big it is. It's huge. And you can, you know, the thing, one of the things I get so clearly over the last, I'm going to say two years is that this body is actually serving it, us at its highest level now. And that is as a conduit yeah. uh, to source. And, and, you know, there's animals are serving us at higher levels. I won't go into all that, but everything consciousness is rising and rising and rising. And we'll, we are going to get to a point where, you know, what we're doing is we're moving out of thinking mode into receiving mode. Mm. And that's where freedom is because if you're not having to make a decision with your thinking mind then there's no stress or pressure you're just asking you're receiving you're going okay well I don't argue with spirit if I'm supposed to you know I moved you know I I've gotten to a point and people think I'm crazy but I'm, I ask about every every little thing pretty much you know um, yeah not every little thing but you know it, I'm on retreat right now is it highest best for me to go on this retreat yes or no yes <laughs> it is if it were no, I wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. no? You know, it's funny. My version of that now, I'm, I'm not as highly evolved <laughs> in my, my intuition, but I do lean on my intuition a lot in my work. Um, I find myself really focusing on the sensations in my body. And so, um, yeah. and I, I completely resonate with everything you said about surrendering. And, and for me, I've had a lot of mind shifts around money. You know, the two of you have taught me quite a lot about running a business, actually. I don't know if I share this much with you. Um, one is Louis, like this past summer, I took a week off every week of the summer <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, I don't need to work. <laughs> I mean, obviously do work and I had a lot going on, but I should really, you know, appreciate my time. And then mm -hmm. I also started doing like four day-ish work week thing that you have been doing for years because I remember there were times when I was like trying to book an appointment with Lewis and I'm like where is this man that he can't have an appointment for like two weeks <laughs> or like Fridays are all non no appointments left on Fridays what and so now I do that so I'm that person to my client yeah. <laughs> and then as far yeah, as the charging it. goes I also I don't necessarily do the intuition as um as yeah and that is as explicit as you have described Gail, but I do find myself just getting a yes or no on certain projects that I should work on. I've started saying no to some things, partly because I just notice in my sensation, if I have kind of a uh, feeling versus a, 
Ah, if I have curiosity, interest, something, it doesn't have to be like, yay, but it could just be like a, hmm? a leaning forward. And then it's a yes. When I have a, yeah. uh, it's a no. Mm -hmm. And things like that, I've started to respond to. I noticed them before, but I think my logical brain always overrode what I was going to do or say, because I'm like, well, of course, this is, I'm an entrepreneur and I need to act like this. Now it's more like, no, I'm just going to go with what my sens sensations tell me. So yeah. it's beautiful. That body, stuff. that beautiful conduit, that body, yeah. you know, it, it will tell you it, it constricts with a no and it expands with a yes. There it is. There it is. Wow, man, you know, I could talk for, with you guys for days, literally. Um, I'm curious, yeah. as we are wrapping up this experience of meeting a stranger and having this conversation on the podcast, first of all, what has it been like for you having this conversation with each other? Uh, it's been wondrous. That's the word that's coming to me. It's been wondrous. It's been you know? great. Yeah. And um, I was kind of thinking, Oh, I hope I have something interesting to say, <laughs> but it's just been very easy and fun. <laughs> yes, good. I say your intuition was spot on, Valerie, in uh, bringing, uh, <laughs> bringing us all together. That's what I would say. Thank you. And I use it for this too, actually, because I make the matchups based on how I've, the, if I get Deal. a spark, so a yeah. possibility. Um, I'm wondering what are the two of you taking away from our conversation that you didn't have prior to coming here? Lewis. I'm um, taking away that I need to get Gail's phone number so I can call her as a resource <laughs> for me. <laughs> That's done deal. Yeah. We'll share okay. that. At, yeah. We'll, when we, when we end our podcast, we'll absolutely exchange. Have you guys exchange contact info? And, and vice versa. Yeah, and just in, 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 yeah. Addition, in addition to that, just like, oh, Course in Miracles, the Celestine Prophecy, and just just the general thing that you're walking down the street and you don't, you think, I I've got all this weird stuff going on, and then you don't realize that person is very similar to me. Yeah. You know, like meeting a stranger and like, oh, we've had similar experiences, we have similar beliefs, or mm -hmm. uh, we're not as alone as we think we are. Yeah. Right. I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm not totally surprised because this happens a lot, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm always still in awe when I watch how the universe puts things together. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So I'm really like, wow. Wow. <laughs> and you know, it's so, and I appreciate you guys saying that because I forget this is my nature to connect people and to draw out in conversation like this. But I forget how meaningful it is, how, mm -hmm. how, yeah, not just how meaningful, but how special it is to A, have the intuition, know who to bring together and what kind of conversation might be inspired because of it, but then also the impact. And this is a great reminder of why I love doing what I do. I mean, I get to bring some of the, the my vehicle, I call this my vehicle for my mission, really. And it could, the vehicle could be upgraded anytime. So I may not do this for 20 years. But for right now, you know, I love to speak. I love to ask questions and I love to, you know, connect to different people and boom, I get to do it for fun right here. So I'm so grateful for the two of you having said yes, sharing so much of your, your wisdom, your insight, your expertise. I, I can't wait to see the impact that you have on the communities that you serve and whoever else is out there that might be needing to have a conversation with someone with your skills and your, your insights. Fantastic. Any final words before we wrap up? I, I've been wanting to have you ask that question so I could interject this one last thing. <laughs> it was the psych <laughs> case. The, the psych case stuff, I will, I will often go through a series of questions like someone wants to do something like I want more money or I want to find a, a romantic partner or uh, something. And we'll, we'll do these uh, statements out loud to check the beliefs on the stuff. And it's, it's quite cool. It goes back to Gail's point about all stuff's energy and thoughts are energetic and beliefs are energetic. But it's interesting, like a lot, I want more money. But invariably, the thing of, that's holding back the money is, do you love yourself? Mm. Uh, and that fails. Yeah. Good luck with money. Yeah. Good you luck know, with money. Or, um, yeah. 
Good luck with deserve. money. Good luck with romance. Good luck with your weight. Yeah, good luck right. with good luck with anything. Yeah. It's like, do you uh, like? I want a romantic partner. Do you feel like you deserve it? Mm. Oh well, right. good luck with that. You don't feel like you're deserving of something. Right. So the shift needs to be often something way out of left field yeah. that has something to do with self love mm. rather than the goal, because the goal is very specific, but it's based on you're being generous with yourself and allowing yourself to get the good stuff. And somewhere along the line, we, we start to feel like we don't deserve it. So right. mm. it really, it's, uh, it really, it's, it's down to how you want it. How do you feel about yourself? How do you want to feel? Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's, 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 you know, I've got a, that was another thing. It was one of my questions is that, you know, how do you want to feel at, if you could look back, you know, from the end of your life, um, how do you want to feel at the end of your life? And I read that in a book. It was a Richard Todd book, a question. And it was a powerful question because once you get to that, then, and you, and you can really define that. And I know this from my own experience, then life will start lining up with it, you mm. know? So how do you want to feel? That's the more important than what do you want? Because what you want is a feeling. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think we should honor your question by answer. Lewis, how do you want to feel at the end of your life? Well, yeah. I'll answer that question and I'll be our final, I'll wrap up. <laughs> You're answering the question or what? All three of us. How do you want oh. to feel at the end of your life? I want to feel surprised that my life just ended. Like, <laughs> oop. <laughs> I don't want to know that death is coming. You don't want to know. Years. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be like, oh, knocking on the pearly <laughs> gates. What happened? But uh, also, I guess if, if I had to look back in like a retrospective, I would like to feel like I contributed to, um, you know, I had some fun and saw the planet. The planet is so beautiful, but I would like to have a sensation that I accomplished something, meaning that I helped raise up the, you know, my area help raise up the dallas area or the world make mm. a make a contribution that's what i would like to see yeah i did something good mm. yeah mine's very similar my the two words that flew in were full and fulfilled yeah that's what came in i'm like oh i like that <laughs> yeah and uh and i am full and fulfilled mm. i love that i I'm going to borrow one of those <laughs> and also fulfilled came up for me, fulfilled and joyful. And I think, mm. you know, I, I tried to integrate and connect to joy as the name of my business, but I, that there's, there's a, <laughs> on my mantle, there's a little uh, frame with the word joy in Hindi, because I was a guest at a, a wedding, a friend of mine who is from India. And I was assigned to the joy table. Each table had a different frame with a different word, like love and joy and et cetera. And I was just like, this is actually for me. This was my parting gift. So thank you, Bidget and Lindsay for the parting gift <laughs> that no one else got. <laughs> but thank you both so very much. This has been really a treat to not only introduce each other, but also to to hear about all, all the wonderful things that, that are that you all are up to. I will make sure that in the show notes, people can find you. So they'll have your contact information, websites, et cetera. And, and for those of you who are listening to this, if you've been touched, moved, inspired, or anything that was said resonated, make sure that you like us in the podcast platform that you use or give us a thumbs up or rate us a high number or put a comment down, like let people know what you got from this conversation. Um, let me know. Let let Gail and Lewis know what you got from it. This was so, so cool. Thank to the two of you again. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Uh, thank you. You've been listening to the podcast, Not Quite Strangers. Be sure to subscribe or follow on your favorite video or podcast platform. And for more information and content, go to notquitestrangers.com. See you next time.